Well, greetings in that wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Big amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for some sunshine today. No heavy rain. Bless you, Lord. Well, I just want to say that Jesus Christ is my best friend. You know, for many years of my life, I wandered in the highways and the byways of sin and darkness and bondage. Grew up in a big Irish family. There was eight kids. The first guy up in the morning was the best dress for the day. You can identify sometimes with that. There was a lot of violence in the home, a lot of blood spilled on the floors, a lot of things that went on and were raped from the pit of hell. Satan was ruling and reigning at 549 Patterson Street in Peterborough, Ontario. The cops were coming and going. Doors were being kicked off the hinges. People jumping through windows. People being taken out in handcuffs and leg irons, even in a straitjacket. Our German Shepherd dog would lick the blood off the floors. These are hardcore things that I'm telling you, but they're all facts. I grew up in an environment where there was a lot of lifeless, crisis religion. And I won't get into denominations, but it was a lot of religious garbage. And friends and neighbors, I'm here to tell you today that I'm not into playing church or just hanging around the church, and I'm not into lifeless, crisis religion. I wasted many, many years of my life full of hatred, full of anger, full of bitterness. My father was one of the most violent men I ever met in my life. He used to punch me out on a regular basis. He was a mean, angry man, and the devil, Satan, Lucifer, was living inside of him. I could tell you stories and things that he did to other members of my family who were not very positive. They were not very nice. He even tried to kill one of my brothers. But you know, I got involved in the streets, I got involved with the gangs, I got involved in robbing and stealing, breaking into homes, breaking into businesses. I was picked up over and over again by the cops, in and out of juvenile uh, courts, eventually into provincial courts and institutions. At 17 years old, I was sitting in Kingston Penitentiary, and if you know anything about the penitentiaries in Ontario, Kingston Penitentiary was a maximum security institution, something like uh, Stony Mountain and Winnipeg or Collins Bay in Kingston. And I was a very confused young man. 17 years old, they slammed those penitentiary doors behind me. And you know what? I was empty inside. I didn't like myself. I didn't care about my life. I was basically a nobody, a big time loser. And I was on the highway to hell. You know that old song, ACDC, I'm on the highway to hell? Well, that's the highway that I was on. I remember that song Steppenwolf used to sing, Born to be Wild. You know what? I was born to be wild because I was spiritually dead to God and I was doing my own thing. But you know, the good news today is we can be born again. Hallelujah. Amen. We can Hallelujah. be born of the Spirit of God and we can begin to move in the jet stream of covenant promises, the peace and the joy and the fellowship and love of Jesus. And we can be a light in the darkness to others. We can bless our fellow man. We can enrich other people's lives. We can make deposits of love and grace and hope and mercy to other people. And that's good news for all of us today because we can't make it on our own, friends and neighbors. If we don't have any sail on our sailboat, we ain't going too far. We're just gonna get lost in the turbulence, in the storms of life. Anyway, in 1987, I got out of the federal penitentiary. I did 87 months straight for various counts of armed robbery and guns and all this garbage. But I got out in 1987, and I was a very angry man still. And I'd gone through riots and smash-ups and lockdowns, you know, solitary confinements, 23 hours a day in my cell. i have been stabbed in the back, stabbed in the shoulder, twice in the head. I can show you later, I had a straight razor from behind, a guy drug me across my jugular vein. I shouldn't be here today, but for the grace of God, I know where I could be. Down yonder, there's three floors on the elevator. There's here we are now, there's heaven above, and there's a place called hell below. And that's where I should be, but, but for the grace of God, I rejoice and say thank you, Jesus, for having mercy on me. And you know, he's so awesome. As I said, as I kicked this little message off today, Jesus Christ is my best friend. But I got out of prison in 1987 with a whole lot of anger and confusion, insecurity. Uh, I just had so many problems. I could, I could just go on and on and on. But the good news is this. Before we were conceived in our mother's womb, God planned us and purposed us. He has a destiny for every one of us here today. And he loves you so much, I couldn't even begin to identify or could never measure how much he loves every one of us. Think about it. Jesus Christ came down here 
He washed people's feet. He fed the multitudes. He healed the sick. He opened blind eyes. He raised the dead. Jesus wasn't some religious freak. He didn't come, promote, come to promote lifeless, Christless religion. He came to bring his blessing to those that are open to receive. And you know what? Jesus Christ in 1987, when I ended up back in the federal penitentiary again, locked up 23 hours a day in Millhaven Maximum Security Penitentiary, I was a broken man. I was, a, I was basically a three-time loser. And I didn't tell you this, in 1980 I was on Canada, I'm not here to brag about Rob, I'm here to brag about Jesus Christ. But in 1980, after several counts of these robberies and guns and all the rest, I escaped on the RCMP after a sentence to nine years in the federal penitentiary. I escaped on the RCMP squad car in front of a county jail. And they put me on a Canada-wide warrant. And I'll tell you right now, there was a bullet with my name on it. If those cops would have cornered me at that time and place, because I was a very violent, angry man, and my life didn't matter. And if you don't love yourself and you don't care about your own life, how can you possibly love somebody else or care about anybody? That's the condition I was in. Anyway, to make a long story short, I surrendered to the cops three weeks later in St. Catharines, Niagara Falls, Ontario, back into the federal penitentiary. This is in 87. In 1987, locked up in that cage, I started reading these little testimony books and the pamphlets. And you know, you got time on your hands. You can serve time and let time serve you, right? So I got into reading these books and started chipping away at some of these testimonies and stories that I heard about Jesus. And I'll be frank with you, and I mean, I'm sure you've got a bit of the picture here. There was, there was a part of me that said, you know what, this God stuff, this religious stuff, this Jesus stuff, I don't need that. Where was God when I was going through all these storms? Where was God when I was being stabbed and, and my life was on, on the edge? Where was God when all these terrible things were happening when I was growing up? How could God possibly say he loved me? So I had an attitude on it, and it wasn't a real good one. But you know, that cell in 1987, reading those books, testimony books, I picked up one book specifically, just a little tiny one, like one of those little Bibles over there, and I started chipping away at that book. It was called Dealing with the Devil. Now I got tattoos up and down my arms, even got one of Satan on my chest. I had the name Lucifer written on my penitentiary door in big, bold, black letters, because I didn't know Jesus Christ. But as I read that book, got into that book called Dealing with the Devil, for the first time in my life, at 30 years old, a four-time penitentiary loser, on the highway to hell, the Holy Spirit, and he's here today, the Spirit of God is here, and he's holy, and he's righteous, and he's awesome, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we're talking, God is here, God is in the house. But you know, the Holy Spirit convicted me of my sin in 1987 in that cage, and I cried out from the bottom of my heart, and you know, I was a bit of a tough guy, I'll be frank with you. I worked out in the iron, boxing, martial arts. I was in pretty good shape physically, but mentally I was sick, and emotionally I was a basket case. But I cried out in that cell. You know what I said to Jesus Christ? Have mercy on a scumbag like me. That's what I said to Jesus Christ. And that was the most beautiful moment in my life, because Jesus Christ came into my heart. He washed me with his precious blood. He filled me with the Holy Spirit of God. And you know something, for the next two years inside that federal penitentiary, it was kingdom business. It was an inside job for Jesus. Hallelujah. I wasn't ashamed of Jesus Christ. I wasn't going to hang my head because I had accepted the Lord. Matter of fact, I told you, if Jesus Christ is your best friend, it's downright rude not to introduce him to other people. Amen. He's my best friend. So I ministered to prisoners. I didn't care who you were. I had a witness. I spoke to people about Christ. Led people to the Lord. We had Bible studies. It was kingdom business once again. It was an amazing two years of my life inside of the federal penitentiary system, walking and talking and communing and something with Jesus Christ. I'll tell you, he's real people. Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords, King of Kings. He hasn't changed. He's the same today as he was yesterday. He's going to be the same tomorrow. And one day we're all out of here. You know, if you get one glimpse of heaven, we're living in a dumpster down here. You know what I'm talking about? Heaven is an awesome place. I'm looking Amen. forward to getting there. But until we get there, we want to make our lives count. We want to be a part of the solution instead of a part of the problem. Amen? Amen. A part of the solution. We're living in a very dangerous world right now. You get a lot of people that are unstable in power and authority. There's things going on right now. We need to open up our eyes and put on the high beams and realize, hey, you know what? I need to clean up the books and get right with God because time is short. Time is getting on. Anyways, I wrap this little testimony up. I got out of the penitentiary system in 1987, and God began to take me places that I needed to go. 
I ended up in Manitoba. I got plugged in and hooked up with the body of Christ in, in a non-denominational church where the Holy Spirit was welcome, where the worship was heavily divine, where they preached and taught the uncompromised Word of God. I'm not talking religious stuff. Watered down pablum from some upside down Bible. They spoke the truth and nothing but the truth. And I submitted to the leadership and the authority of God in that house of fellowship and God began to help me to grow up. He began to help me to really mature. You know, when I first started going to that little church in Winnipeg, down in the cockroach alley, whatever you want to call it, it was in the right place and there was a lot of needy souls down there. But you know what, when I first started going there, once people heard that I I spent 16 and a half years of my life in prison, 10 years in the penitentiary. You know what? They started to, they started to back away from me. And I started to feel rejected. I started to feel like uh, that people don't love me. People don't really care about me because I've got this background or this whatever, this mess that I lived in. Well, I want to tell you right now, your mess becomes your message. Hallelujah. Your mess becomes a message for the glory of God. Because you can say, look what Jesus has done. For me, and this is what he's doing now. I'm still working progress, aren't you? We're all working progress. But the first step is say, Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me for my sins. Amen. But you know, God opened many a doors for me to lift up his wonderful name. I've had the privilege of going into many prisons across Canada. I, I've been, I was a chaplain and mission in Ferndale and some of the prisons here for 20 some years. And you know what? I had a chance to go on TV programs and share the grace and hope and love of Jesus. I've been to India seven times, Vietnam a couple of times. I've traveled here and there. But you know what? The bottom line, it's all about the good news. And what's the good news? Jesus Christ came into the world to save those who are lost. He leaves the 99 and he goes looking for that one that's wandering through Wally, wandering through the, you know, the gutters, the ghettos, the, the storms, the prisons, whatever, the, you know, the crack houses, the uptown, the downtown. Jesus said, hey, come unto me. Come unto me. Cast your care upon me. Just, just open up your heart and say, Lord, oh, I sure need you to take control of my life. I can't manage it on my own. I'm not big enough. I've tried and tried and tried. You know, I'm in my 60s, and I'll tell you right now, I can't manage my own life without the Holy Ghost. I cannot manage my own life without Jesus Christ, with the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And Jesus is here today, and if you don't know Him... I'm not trying to push you into the ropes or get you to make some shallow commitment to Jesus Christ. But if you're sitting here today, friends and neighbors, young or old, and, and young folks, listen, all you have to say is, Lord, I don't know you. I've heard about, about you. I did a little bit of that church stuff, but I really need a friend. Amen. This sticks closer than a brother. And I'll tell you right now, when you say yes to Jesus, he will begin a wonderful work. But I'll leave you with this one point. Once you say yes to Jesus, not some church program or religion, yes. okay? Once you say yes to Jesus, I want to encourage you to pray. Just say, Lord, put real Christians in my life. Put those real lovers of the Lord in my life to help me to grow, to love me, to teach me, to rebuke me sometimes, to give me a little kick in the backside when I need it. You know, put the right people in my life yes, that I would become a real lighthouse in the midst of the storm. There's an old song, where would the ships be without the lighthouse. And Jesus is that lighthouse. I want to thank you for your listening here. If there's somebody who would like to pray and receive the Lord, raise your hand. I'll pray a simple prayer with you. And God will begin the, the work that he's got in store for you. Shall we pray together? Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. That you came into this world. Born in a manger. Born in a manger. A baby. But you grew up. And you lived. And you served. And you, and you died. But you rose again on the third day for my soul to give me a new life, to give me hope. Please forgive me for my sins, Jesus. Take control of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a hunger for you. I thank you for your love. I thank you for this time here today. And bless everyone around me, everybody with me today. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. He loves you. He is awesome. It's all about him. God bless you, folks.